But one, because as the Bible says, it's a good thing to do. And number two, I think I have some metropolitan witnesses here, online, archived, or on the telephone line, who know that the Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. Come on and bless him. Come on and honor him. Come on and lift up the holy name of our God. Because I don't know about you, but every time I think about the goodness of Jesus yes. and what he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me because he indeed looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. He didn't have to let me live, but I can indeed say it's another day's journey and I am indeed glad about it. I ask saints of God that you open up your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Commencing at the first verse, and we're just going to read the first 11 verses today, but I ask during your quiet and devotion time that you look at the entire chapter of Ephesians chapter 4. We thank God for our guests from the Illinois area, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and we thank God that they have safe travels to celebrate the life, the legacy, and the love of Sister Rebecca Keith, saints of God, and we continuously pray for that particular family. Amen. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to be reading from the voice translation again. It's a little different from the translations that you have, but as, as long as your book says B-I-B-L-E, that is the book for me, you are indeed in good company. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, commencing at the first verse, As a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you, live a life that is worthy of the calling he has graciously extended to you. Be humble, be gentle, be patient, tolerate one another in an atmosphere thick with love. Make every effort to preserve the unity the Spirit has already created with peace binding you together. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were all called to pursue one hope. There is one Lord, Jesus, one living faith, one ceremonial washing through baptism, and one God the Father over all, who is above all, through all, and in all. The God has given to each of us grace in full measure according to the anointed gift. As the scripture says, when he ascended to the heights, he put captivity in chains, and in his triumph, he gave gifts to the people. Well, when it says he ascended, then that must mean that he had descended earlier to the lower levels that is to the earth. The one who descended is the same who rose from the dead to ascend far above all the heavens so that he could feel all things. It was the risen one who's handed down to us such gifted leaders, some emissaries, some prophets, some evangelists, as well as some pastor teachers. Saints of God, tonight I just want to teach from the subject walking and working together in unity. Why don't you help me say that? Walking and working together in unity. Beloved, I want to start off tonight's teaching by simply asking each and every one of you who is listening to this broadcast or is live and in living color, do you actually know who you are? and what God expects from each and every one of our lives. 
Because this text that we have before us today, from the book of Ephesians, Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus. And he is letting them know three particular things about who they are in their faith walk with God. Because he wants them to spiritually understand, number one, that God wants to use them. He wants to use each and every one of us for his particular glory. Because he has gifted each and every one of us who have eyes to see and ears to hear with gifts that will be used for the edification of the body. Now, a lot of individuals believe, sadly, that only the pastor is supposed to be equipping, empowering, and enabling individuals for the works of ministry. But that is the farthest thing from the truth. Because you got a gift, God's got a gift, and all of God's children have a gift. And he wants to use it for his glory and honor and use us as demonstrations of the Spirit's power. I was tickled peak today because I did not go to campus today because I did not want to go to another campus because the water shut off. So I took a personal day and indeed came to the house of God. Amen. Tony had just left to go and pick up his sister. Richard was distracted by doing something else. And one of the members called and said, Richard, is that you? I said, no. And I saw the caller ID. I said, my 96-year-old brother, you don't know who this is? It's a voice that you hear every week. And he said, this is my preacher? This is my pastor? He said, what in the world are you answering the phone for? I needed to talk to Tony. I told him, I said, I'll take out the garbage. I'll answer the phones. I'll do anything to advance the kingdom of God. Because there's no job too big and no job too small. Because we all have to get on the same page with God and allow him to use us for his particular glory. Yes. He said, Pastor, I'm going to give you a raise. Then. Right. <laughs> but the pastor is not the only one who's supposed to be using his or her gift. Yes. All of us are equipped. And that's why we have to make sure we're in the right place at the right time for God to use us. Yes. Because when it is indeed said it is equipping saints of God, that is a medical term. Mm. And when we will see later on, it says that he gives gifts for the perfecting of the church and the building of the particular body. Mm. Because when something is out of place, you have to go in because you're being gifted by it to put it back into place so that it can be reset and reused again. And that is what God wants us to do. God has empowered us, God has enabled us, and God has equipped us so that we can empower and equip other individuals so that the kingdom of God can be advanced and everyone will know that God rules, God reigns, and God rewards. So he wants to use us. But secondly, he teaches us in this text that we must walk in unity. Mm -hmm. Let the church say unity. unity. Because Psalm 133 says, How good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. There's no big eyes, and there shouldn't be any little U's in the kingdom of God. We are all God's children, and we are wonderfully and beautifully blessed and gifted from above. And therefore, we have to make sure that we are on the same page with one another, on one accord with one another, so that indeed people may be able to know him in the power of his 
resurrection. Because I don't care if people know my name or not. But I want them to know the name of the God of my salvation. Because he is the one who can indeed make a difference in our lives. And he is just using me as a vessel in a vehicle just like he's using you. So that the kingdom of God can be advanced and people can experience his victory. And then thirdly, saints of God, he wants to use us. He wants us to be in unity. And finally, he wants us to be in uniform with his son. All right. We have a dress code at all times, saints of God. Mm -hmm. No matter the circumstance, we ought to be like Jesus. Amen. Because we just got finished teaching from Ephesians chapter 5, and it says that we ought to imitate Christ, saints of God, that God ought to be able to work through us, saints of God. And that is why, saints of God, it says in saints of God, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 11, put on the four armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I'm working on the sermon right now about I'm ready to rip the runway, saints of God. And you can't be partially dressed indeed, saints of God, when you are in the midst of spiritual warfare. No, you got to be dressed by God and allow him to alter your life both from head to toe. And you got to have the attitudes and the actions of the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself. Because as you always hear me say from Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5, God wants you to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. That's why when you look at the book of Ephesians, I told you that the first three chapters, chapter 1, Chapter 2 and chapter 3 deals with the belief statement. What we believe in the body of Christ. But the final three chapters, chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6, Paul moves us from our belief statement to our mission statement. Mm. He moves us from our belief statement to the church's mission statement. Because he wants us to know that our behavior ought to be in alignment with God. Mm. Church, did you hear what I said? Yes. He moves from doctrine, as I told you last week, to your duty. Because he wants us to know, if you do not get anything else, that our lives must be in alignment. Let the church say alignment. 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 With the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself, and against the adversary, mm -hmm. who the scripture says comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he will put us through a series of adversities to see if we are going to be true to our mission statement, saints of God. Where we fold under pressure because somebody is in our ear and he wants to know right here and right now, when the rubber hits the road, will he be able to flip you and change your commitment Say to God, because your conscience, your spiritual awareness ought to indeed be confirmed by your character, your conduct, and your conversation. That was a high pitch over somebody's head, therefore let me slow it down. Your conscience ought to confirm your character, your conduct, and your conversation. Because if you are going to speak about it, you should also be about it, saints of God. You ought to, in other words, my brother, practice what you preach. Because your reputation is who you are before people. And I hope that 
your family gave you a good report and about the reputation of Kwame Jones. <laughs> but your integrity is who you are when nobody is looking. Yes. Amen. And that is why as a pastor and as a man of God, I never want to be embarrassed Embarrassing to my people who pray for me. I was on the 75 leaving King High School just now. And I heard the prayers of Deacon McClay. I heard the prayers of Deacon Latif. I heard the prayers of Trustee Jackson. But I don't ever want to embarrass them by doing something that is not of God. And then they say, I didn't know he was like that. Because as I told you, the last two weeks, God is looking for somebody who is real, mm -hmm. who is saved, who is sanctified, and who is Holy Ghost filled. Amen. Because the adversary is going to be hot on your trail. Mm -hmm. And he is attacking your particular character. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to give you the illustration about how he's trying to flip you. Mm -hmm. Because I just picked up justice from Martin Luther King High School, but there's several coaches who are calling me Mm -hmm. calling his mama, talking to his brother in the hallway, mm -hmm. saying, why is Justice going to that school on East Lafayette when he indeed comes from a different pedigree? Mm -hmm. And he is true to the game. Mm -hmm. It is what he wants to do for the path that God has carved out for his particular life. Mm -hmm. And he's firm in his conviction and as 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 15, 15 and verse number 58 says, he is steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in his particular decision. And there should be no turning back. No matter what is offered, you got to stand up in the full power, the authority, and the anointing of God and say that I am God's man. Yeah. I am God's woman, and I'm going to live for him. And you can't right. make me do anything that he hasn't called me to do. Right. Because I listen to his voice, because he has a purpose and a plan for my life. So we have to have our lives in alignment with him and against the adversary who's trying to flip us, saints of God. Unity releases mm -hmm. the power of God. Mm -hmm. God has divinely knitted and closely committed our lives together here at the Metropolitan Baptist Church. Therefore, we have to make sure that we are on the same page and on one accord with one another. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we must come together enter into his gates with worship and into his courts with praise. We enter to worship, but then we depart to serve. So we got to come together, we got to walk together, and we got to put in that work together. Because only what we do for Christ will last. And we don't want the recognition. We want him to be glorified on high. Yes, God wants us to work with him but we also got to work together. Therefore, saints of God, we got to complete our kingdom assignments because we are not here to compete with one another. We're here to complete whatever it is that God has called us to do, and we must do it by staying in our own lane because God is not the author of confusion. So we got to complete whatever it is that God has called us to do without confusion, saints of God. Because how can we say that we love God whom we haven't seen and not love our brother and our sister who we see every day? We cannot just have a vertical connection, saints of God. No, God does not want us just to have a vertical connection. He wants us to have also a horizontal connection because when we have a 
vertical and a horizontal connection, people will not see us, but they will see the God who is dwelling on the inside of us. Church, are y'all in here with me today? Yes. Right. So we got to be unified. We got to know that God wants to use us. And we got to know, saints of God, that we have to be in uniform, in lock and step with the God of our salvation. Mm -hmm. And we must wholeheartedly say to him, it can't just be a cute ditty in a song. Mm -hmm. Wherever you lead me, God, I will follow and I will go without complaining. Because I know that God may give us the strength to complain, mm -hmm. but we should never take him up on it because he's just been that good to us. Amen. And that's why even in, uh, you know, uh, Ephesians 4 and 15, it says that we got to learn how to talk to one another. We got to be able to speak the truth in love. Because you have heard me say before in the past that truth without love is condemnation. That I love the water, I, I want to get the water told so much, but I don't do it in love. That's condemnation. But on the other side of the spectrum, love without truth. It's compromise. That I go to my other Luana, Luana Watts, trusty Watts, and I love her so much, but I can't indeed get her and push her to where God divinely desires for her to be because I may see that she's half-stepping in a particular area, saints of God, that I don't indeed tell her the truth. Mm. And she won't grow that particular way. And we want to be able to tell our children the truth. And we ought to indeed allow God to speak the truth in love for us so that he can propel us into our particular purpose. So Paul opens up in verse number one. He says, walk worthy according to your vocation, your calling. But he says in the King James Version, I beseech you to walk worthy. He is urging them. He is pleading them to indeed keep it real and keep it 100 because I have poured into you the principles that you need to prosper as a child, a man, or a woman of God. But indeed it don't mean anything if your walk is not matched with your particular talk, saints of God. It got to all come together. And he says something that is strange because Paul is speaking here from personal experience and not borrowed theology because it says Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because he wants us to spiritually understand that you got to be totally tied up tangled up and wrapped up in the will of God, the word of God, and indeed the way of God, saints of God. You got to give him the complete custody of your heart, your soul, and your mind, that you are yoked to him, that your heart totally belongs to him, and you are willing to go all out because you know that 99 and a half just won't do. Amen. In other words, he is sold out to the Savior. And that's why I want you to know, church, that God wants us all. The key word here in verse number one is walk worthy yes. according to his will. Therefore, as I just said, we must follow his way, his word, and we must indeed be willing to do whatever it takes to keep the faith moving and the unity that he has set up and established in the church. Because he doesn't tell us to create the unity. He just tells us to guard the unity and display the love, the life, and the lordship of Jesus Christ to everyone we meet and to one 
another. So that we can work together, so that we can walk together with one voice, one vision, and one victory. That's what unity produces. Mm -hmm. One voice, one vision, mm -hmm. and one victory. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was tied up in traffic just now, saints of God, I had to go into the high school and I said, I got to go get my cameraman. Coach, I don't care what you're doing and where you're at in practice. We got to get to the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But just so say, if I didn't get here to 645, I would have prayed that somebody could have stood in my place till I got here mm -hmm. and indeed echoed the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because you know that God has gifted you in a particular area and for a reason for his glory. Mm -hmm. That is why both day in and day out, we must go out there and indeed give him all that we got. By maintaining, hear me today, here's the operative word. A balanced lifestyle that glorifies him. Yes, we have, must have a balanced lifestyle that glorifies him. That's why I told you that our talk must indeed match our walk. Because one can't be up here and the other one is down here, saints of God. Because something is wrong with that particular equation. That you are one way when you're in front of everybody and you are totally a different person behind closed doors. The Greek word for walk worthy here in the first verse is the word axios. A-X-I-O-S. This is a Bible study. A-X-I-O-S. Which literally means to balance the scales. Because our doctrine, his word, is to be balanced by our way of life, saints of God. And we shouldn't tip the scales by not walking worthy according to his will. Because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction, chaos, and confusion. And you should be walking worthy according to the will of God because God wants to put you on display, saints of God, and he wants other individuals to be attracted to the fragrance that you put out, saints of God, by the lifestyle that you lead 24 hours and seven days a week. But if indeed you're out there doing your own thing, you won't be able to attract individuals. They'll be detached saints of God, because you did not live a balanced lifestyle before the Lord, and you did not walk worthy according to his will. We must walk as Jesus walked and wrestle with the devil without delay if we want to walk victoriously and claim the abundant life that God has for us. In other words, to cut a long story short, Daniel, we reveal who God is when we replicate, mimic, and copy his attitude and actions. That's why I told you earlier from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58, we got to be steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work and the will of God. In short, we don't do it that is walking worthy according to his will to gain any brownie points. But we do it because we are truly blessed by the Lord and we want to only trust and obey him and serve the Lord with gladness. Because we want our souls 
to take a stroll with the Savior. And if you look at the message in Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 4, God is talking to the church at Sardis. And he says in Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 4, he is letting us know, don't wallow in the muck of the world's ways. Can somebody read that for me, Revelation 3 and 4? Because God wants us to know, church, we must keep our lives clean and walk worthy with Christ and let him lead and guide us because he wants us to be so fresh and so clean, dressed in white. That's why when Deacon Latif came into, not Deacon Latif, you got called to the carpet about having on the wrong suit, Deacon Latif. But when Deacon Kansas Kansas came into my office for the deacon's meeting, he had on a pure white suit. And one of the other deacons said, brother, you got it going on. And Deacon Latif, you was half-stepping, right? Uh -oh. <laughs> Are you in here today with me, Deacon Latif? So what uh, Sister Wyndham is just going to say is, I want to prove to God that I'm worthy to walk with him. Because when you are walking in victory, saints of God, it is like going through a victory parade. Now, we haven't had a victory parade in the city of Detroit in a long time because our teams are flat out sorry. But back in the day, there used to indeed be victory parades. Ooh. First Lady was indeed blowing kisses to Isaiah Thomas, and she claims Isaiah Thomas acknowledged that particular kiss and everything like that. But saints of God, I want to be in the victory parade with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I want to have on my victory attire indeed while I'm walking worthy according to God's will because I'm walking with my Savior. Can somebody read that text for me, saints of God? Revelations 3 and 4 says, Yet you have a few people in Sardis who are not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. Amen. I want God to say to me, how about you? That I'm worthy. When it's all said and done, I want to be able to put on my robe and tell the story of how I've overcome. Because I know if it wasn't for the grace, the mercy, and the loving kindness of God, and me cleaning up what I messed up, I would indeed be a musty individual. Yeah. My life would be literally tore up from the floor. Yeah. But that's why I can say that because he lives, mm. I can face tomorrow and because he lives, all fear is gone, saints of God. Because yeah. God promised in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 30, saints of God, that all things will work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose, saints of God. Amen. Therefore, if we are truly grateful, our gate, which is our walk, ought to show it, and it ought to speak volumes to who God is in our life in the victory that he established through the sacrificial and substitutionary death of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. I want to be like those t-shirts say, you look like you're ready to go to a parade because it says that I'm marching for Jesus. I'm walking with Jesus. I'm glorifying Jesus. And I'm not just doing it with my lips. I'm doing it with my lifestyle. Church, are y'all in here with me tonight? And we ought to have a good will towards our brothers and our sisters. And that's major, church. Because God has equipped us. God has empowered us and enabled us to do everything that he has specifically called us to do every day without excuses. Because excuses are tools of incompetence, building monuments of nothingness. Those who use them seldom amount to anything. 
And I am a child of God, therefore I'm proud to let you know that I am somebody in Christ Jesus. Yes, we got everything that we need if we just stay connected to him and stay committed to following him and subsequently get ourselves out of the way so that God can have his own way in and through our lives. In short, that is why the Apostle Paul is teaching the church at Ephesus that since God has in fact graciously extended his trust and work to us, we must in return as the people of God embrace the spiritual truth and reality that our lives are not our own anymore. And some mother ought to indeed, even before Mother's Day, say amen to that. Some father ought to say amen to that because even on my off day, I've been ripping and running from school to school. And I can say that I'm a father without saying I'm a father because you can look at my odometer and a lot of those miles ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> it all has to do with who I represent and who God holds me accountable for, saints of God. So we got to embrace that our lives are not our own. Therefore, we got to give ourselves on over to him so that he can use us for his glory. In fact, Paul, a prisoner of Christ, is speaking from his own personal experiences because he has seen firsthand from day one when God picked him up, turned him around, and placed his feet on the solid ground that he has surely gifted us all to go on the go for him, to glow for him by letting our light shine, as Matthew 5 and 16 says, and indeed grow in him because of him leading, guiding, and directing our lives. We ought to embody who Jesus is because we are the closest thing to Jesus that people will ever see. And people would rather see a sermon then hear a sermon any day. That's why I told you I can't cut up with my co-workers at the water cooler. All right. And I can't cut up indeed if I won't cut up in here, why would I cut up in there? I wanted to indeed get the scoop and the the uh, the popcorn on, on why something happened. And I can I can't gossip and, and uh you know talk about my particular members, saints of God. What type of leader would that be, saints of God? We got to indeed stay focused on the will of God. In a real sense, all I'm trying to let you know right along here is, God wants the word, the word of God, to be at work in our lives and literally leap off of the pages as we walk in our purpose and as he elevates us into a new level and dimension in him. Hence, if you do not get anything else from tonight's teaching from Ephesians chapter 4, God's word for somebody in here today is, there must be some exclusions in your life if you want to be empowered in him. You got to get rid of some stuff in your life. Mm -hmm. There has to be a spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. And you ought to get a dumpster because there's too much stuff within us that is causing us not to walk worthy according to God's will. And if it indeed is being held on to us by us, it will stunt our spiritual growth and development. But saints of God, I want to grow up in God as this text will literally teach us from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Because that's the measuring stick. That's the bar. And it is not going to be lowered and put down by anybody. And that's why I gave you Philippians 2 and 5 earlier. And this is why in verse number 2 it says, be humble be gentle, be patient, and tolerate one another in an atmosphere thick with love. And as we can see in a few minutes, 
Some married couple can say amen to that. <laughs> because, <laughs> because Luana puts up with a lot of the pastor's mess. <laughs> Who is amen? Who is it? Oh. <laughs> I thought she loved me. This is why in verse number two, she didn't even say amen herself. <laughs> he deliberately, in spite of Tony's outburst, details four qualities, or should I say virtues, that we must possess and carry as the people of God that will ultimately lead to victorious living as the people of God and as a congregation. For as I told you last week, your character is so vital to the victory that God has for you. Therefore, if you truly want to represent him, in other words, beloved, we must practice these four principles and are not allowed anything to bear us off of the path that God has purposed and ordained and how he wants us to walk in unity as the body of believers. Because he has set it up and established it that way. For, in, for us in Christ Jesus. For if we want to act like him, there's no other way to cut it. We got to be like him. And the first thing he lets us know, the first virtue is we must be humble. The King James Version says there must be lowliness. When you have a humble opinion of yourself and you truly recognize and realize that you are not all of that, nor to catch me out. But the truth of the matter is, you are truly nothing without him. Yes. And that's why I can say as Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But without him, my life is literally lost and I'm tore up from the floor. Amen. So we got to stop thinking so highly of ourselves, sense of God, because he is the only one who should be exalted on high. Therefore, as believers, we must wholeheartedly allow God to have complete control of our lives because our number one aim, goal, and focus should always be to model our life after the master's mandate. Let me say that one more time because I tripped up over my words. Our number one aim, goal and focus are to model our lives after the master's mandate. For he is certainly a good person to follow. Mm -hmm. And during your quiet and devotion time, I want you to look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Mm -hmm. Because you always hear me talk about the fifth verse. But Jesus thought it not robbery to take on the form of man, saints of God, and he humbled himself even to the cross, saints of God. And now as Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 9, God has highly exalted him because he had humbleness as a virtue. He exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. And another thing about humbleness can be found right here in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 3. Reading from the voice translation, it says, Because of the grace allotted to me, Kwame Jones, put your name in it. I can respectfully tell you not to think of yourselves as being more important than you are. In other words, he's saying if it hadn't been for the grace of God, I don't know where I would be. Therefore, devote yourselves, your mind, devote your mind to sound judgment. 
Make good decisions that bring about a deliverance in your life. Since God has assigned to each of us a measure of faith. The second virtue is being gentle. In the King James Version, it says meekness. As I told you a couple of weeks ago, a month ago or so, meekness is not weakness. Meekness is strength under control. There's been a lot of times where I could have got somebody told and got them straight, as my dad would say, and indeed knew that I was in the right. But how would that glorify God? I had to indeed humble myself and show meekness. Because I don't represent myself. I am a kingdom ambassador. And I am a kingdom representative. And I'm marching for Jesus. Thank you for wearing that shirt today. <laughs> it is strength and power under control. This is a quality that we must exhibit before God and others. Galatians 6 and 1 says, My brothers and sisters, if one of our if one of our faithful has fallen into a trap, is snared in sin, don't stand idle and talk about him. That's the Jones translation. And watch his or her demise. No. You who are spiritual have to been equipped, you have been enabled, you have been empowered to restore him or her. Being careful not to step into your own snare. Because we might talk about somebody, saints of God, and say, look at all of that, look how they have, how the mighty have fallen. But if we don't check ourselves before we wreck ourselves, the devil will send a temptation our way. And indeed, we'll be falling through the cracks ourselves. No, we are restorers of the breach, saints of God. And we must represent God at all times because that is what glorifies the God of our salvation. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 3 in verse number 2 says, Tell them not to speak evil of anyone, but live in peace. With others, they should be gentle and polite to some people, to all people, to everyone. Everybody? Yes, everybody. Can I pick and choose, Trustee Jackson? No. I got to do it the way God instructed me to do it. And then Colossians 3 and 12. It says in Colossians 3 and 12, God has chosen you and made you his holy people. Guess what? He loves you. So your new life should be like this. Show mercy to others. Be kind. Be humble, be gentle, and be patient. Now, I don't know if you know it or not. It must be very important. I know you talk about me saying scriptures on a daily basis, but indeed, Jesus is repeating himself in a lot of these particular texts that we have before us because he's talking about humbleness, gentleness, meekness, lowliness, all in different verses because he really wants us to catch it in the spirit and it contemplate it and indeed allow it to change our life because that is what the word of God is supposed to do. It is supposed to challenge us, confront us, and change us, saints of God. The third one is being patient or long-suffering. That is the capacity to accept or tolerate Delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry and upset. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody in here tonight? Whereas a child of God, we got to learn how to basically bear and deal with one another. 
<laughs> in love and in peace just as Jesus has divinely dealt with us and held us up with. Therefore, go ahead and write in your notes. I got you. I need you and you need me. Now, this is where I need Joe Latif, where he would be in the front row saying, I got you, baby. <laughs> I need you. You need me. We are all a part of God's family. Stand with me. Agree with me. And let's walk and work together in unity and keep the bond of peace. During your quiet and devotion time, let me give you three texts that I looked up for this, and we're not going to go over these texts. 2 Peter 3 and 9. Romans chapter 5. Verses 3 through 4. And we all know Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 22. We got 10 minutes left. Let me give you the fourth one. And this is what made my administrative assistant talk, but I'm going to be patient with her. <laughs> it's tolerance. Forbearing one another in love. Before I break down what tolerance is, Matthew 7 and 1 says, Judge not that you be not judged. What is tolerance? Tolerance is the ability or willingness to put up with some stuff some opinions and some behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. Let me say that one more time. Rewind. Tolerance is putting up with some stuff, some behavior or some sayings that one may not necessarily agree with. And somebody in here who's married knows that you put up with a whole lot of stuff and mess as married couples. <laughs> What'd you say? Or been married. married. <laughs> Your tolerance level ran out. Ran out that <laughs> Husband and wives don't always agree. Can I get an amen from the congregation? Amen. amen. <laughs> <laughs> Nor are they always on the same page? But they learn to give and take to the glory of God. Amen. And look what it, verse number three says. It says, endeavoring, make every effort to preserve the unity the Spirit has already created with peace binding you together. Amen. Trust me, watch, that's why I had to stick to the script I couldn't allow my words to because I would be given an illustration that I talked about on Sunday. <laughs> you got to forget those things which are behind you. And when she watched it on the tape because she missed the service because Zion won another award with the NAACP painting and he will indeed be going to Boston this year representing the uh, NAAC local chapter in his business plan and also a painting. He got gold medal in both uh, divisions and he will be in the Axel competition, saints of God. And then, then she said when she heard the tape when I talked about, I can't give those illustrations no more. So on Sunday she better not be talking about none of her old things. Or I'm going to indeed stand up and say, wait a minute. <laughs> so, but it says, Make every effort to preserve the unity that the Spirit has already created with peace binding you together. Yes. Verse number three is basically saying there ain't no future in your front. Right. Therefore, you need to make a real effort to keep and maintain the unity and the peace God desires nevertheless. Get yourself out of the equation and let God have his own way. Yes, there, these are the qualities, church, 
that we must learn, lean on, as we live in an atmosphere that is founded on love. And we allow God to lead our lives as a church. The first point is, and we're going to end. I don't have, I don't have to be rushed today because uh, we got a trustee meeting after this, saints of God. The first point, and we're going to pick up the rest of this teaching. We've been blessed by our guests already. The first point is that God is empowering us all in his service. Notice I did not say y'all. I did not say some. All of us have a gift to use for the glory of God. That's why I'm grateful that, you know, I called out that to help out on Friday doing the homegoing service. First lady says she's thinking about taking a day off or, or uh, working a half day so that she can indeed serve during the repast. My mother said she's going to be here. Sister Rain is going to be here because when one of us hurt, we all hurt. And indeed, uh, I heard you were here at the church earlier and I was coming down to say hi to you and your cousin. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, What's the work with Tony? Uh, Slaughter, Richard, oh, Richard, said that you were down there with your cousin. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was your sister, sister and everything like that. He yeah. said the one that you're always with and everything like that. <laughs> I thought it was your sister, yeah. but then you guys were gone and stuff. But also look at 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Thus we must indeed stay in our lane and do everything that we can to keep the peace by building each other up. He does not ask us to create the unity because it has already been established and set up in Christ Jesus. He tells us to guard the unity because the unity that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has is the unity that we must pattern our lives after, saints of God. Because in this chapter right here, in Ephesians chapter 4, there are seven onenesses of God. You have one spirit, one body, one love, and we all like to say we got one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is in us all, and one God who is through us all, and we have one hope. So those are seven onenesses that we must pattern our lives after. We have to therefore apply the anointing that God has directly invested in us and do even greater things and works in his name for his agenda to go forth in the body of Christ. For when we all come together and stir up the gift of God that he has planted in us, even before we were formed in our mother's womb, stir up the gift and not stir up the pot of havoc and confusion, God will get the glory out of our lives. Because God's oneness defines the church's oneness. God's oneness defines the church's oneness. Daniel, come on and come on up and let's pray. Let me just say this and we're through for the night and we'll pick up next week. The oneness of God in verses 4 through 6, will undoubtedly bring forth the omnipotence of God, the power of God, since our hope is in Jesus, in Jesus alone. And the Holy Spirit is supporting us and sustaining us and strengthening us every step of the way. And was, as a result of that fact, we must do everything that we can to keep what the Holy Spirit produced intact and guard the Spirit's unity. For when we do all of that by faith, guess what? As the people of God, we will surely win. Amen. Because God has made us more than conquerors mm -hmm. through him that first loved us. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, I don't want to be in the victory parade by myself. But I want all of my brothers and sisters in Christ in this room, mm -hmm. On the telephone call, online, through Facebook Live, and those who will watch it archived, 
to be walking with me and shouting as we are dressed in our robes. And we can indeed march on and say, for God I lived and for God I died. Let's keep the family of Rebecca Keith in our prayers as they journey here to Detroit for a wonderful homegoing service. We pray for her daughter, Fran, and her other daughter, I believe it's said, Selena. Selena, and everything of that particular nature. Let's pray for our mothers. I know it's very hard. I used to always listen to that song growing up in the church, Faith of Our Mothers, both living and dead. And mm. It's hard for some people to come to church mm. on Mother's Day. Yeah. But we thank God that we have a good speaker and she yes. will empower us on that particular day. <laughs> With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, focusing in on Jesus, all that he said and did, little Daniel is going to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father God, I ask him to just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Lord, for God giving us God this day, Lord. For God protecting us, God doing this day, Lord. We know, Lord, people, God, they ain't God get to see this day, Lord. But God, we are here. So we God say thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord, that you have given us many blessings, your Lord, doing this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have God giving us, Lord, mothers, oh Lord. That God has blessed us and God has given us, God, the person that we are, Lord. Yes. We God bless God, all the mothers of the Lord. And God, we ask you, Lord, to help them make God go through God's problems in their life, oh Lord. Let them continue to keep their humanity. Now, God, I say thank you for all the blessings that you have done in our lives. Continue to protect us, God, and show us the way. Continue to us to be the salt of the earth, Lord, and the light of the world. A city yes. upon a hill that cannot be hidden. And Lord, let it not lie, hide your light, O oh Lord, but let it shine before me, mm. and the woman, for they have seen us and seen you. Just thank you for all the blessings that you have done in our life. I ask you, Lord, for us for a great night's sleep, O oh Lord, and let us for a great day to come. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a wonderful evening. God bless you. God keep you. See you on Sunday. See you on Friday. And may his face continue to shine upon you and be blessed. God bless you. Amen.